Welcome to the Cinema Rag, where we celebrate the greatest and worst in Hollywood films and their most self-indulgent, narcissistic actors, directors, and producers. Here, we will laud and malign Hollywood's seedier elements with levity and humor. They love cinema as much as anyone does. and They've been talking about it for over 30 years. Time to get trashy. Here's Gregory and May. Hello, everybody. This is Gregory, and welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Rag. I hope you're doing well today. Today, we're going to continue this series, Sexy Saturday, and talk about Outlander's Katrina Balf. And God knows I am likely mispronouncing her name. I will sound it out because she is Irish. So it, is, it is a Gaelic name, Katrina Balf. She plays Claire Fraser on the, the great star show Outlander. And you might think, well, that, that's this is kind of an, uh, a, an outlandish choice. But look, uh, she has done movies, so theoretically she is somebody that is in cinema. And we've done episodes here on television. For example, we did one on Saturday Night Live and an episode on Succession and some other things like that. So it's not unheard of. And most importantly, for Sexy Saturday's criteria, she is beautiful. Now, if you're not familiar with her, she is, again, she plays Claire on Outlander. Outlander has been on television for almost 10 years now. And it's astonishing that it's been on for almost a decade. And yes, the last few seasons have been kind of sporadic in terms of quality and in terms of frequency compared to when it first came out. But... They're still cranking out the show. And Outlander, of course, is based on books. It's based on books by Diana Gabaldon. And I've read, I think I read the first book. But certainly I did watch the television shows. And I continue to watch the shows when they come out. I don't have cable. I probably should just do an episode about my my television watching. But I, I unplugged the cord about probably seven, eight years ago. So my only opportunity to watch Outlander is what I see on Amazon Prime. Sometimes I'll have stars for like three ninety nine a month, and I might get or I'll, I might get a free trial when Outlander comes out and I watch it. Because I don't think at this point there's there's a lot of television shows on stars that I do watch. So when Outlander does come out with a new season, I do watch the television show. And the television show is great. If you're not, if you're not familiar with it, it's about uh, it takes place in World War II. Claire is married, and through a series of events, she's taken back in time to the Jacobite Rebellion when Scotland is trying to free itself from English rule in the 1740s, and she falls in love with a gentleman by the name of Jamie, and then complications ensue, and then from there, it's 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 a romance and it's a historical drama. And she bounces back throughout various times of, of American and English history. And there's a lot of settings. It's a great show. And, and I would say I like it because I'm a big fan of history. And you don't really get to see a lot of movies and television shows that focus on the Jacobite Rebellion, which I'm a big fan of because that's when the Hanovers took over England. And the Hanovers were Protestants. And the last Stuart King was a Catholic and he was deposed in the Glorious Revolution and they brought over eventually uh, the, the, these German Protestant monarchs. And so essentially the Jacobites were Scottish Catholics who were wanting to bring back the legitimate crown, which they found to be the Stuart crown because the Stuart family was from Scotland. Blah, blah. You're probably falling asleep. Either way, I like it for that regard. And I also like it for like the day in, day out, how it shows how it was like to live in various settings that the the show takes place in, what it was like in the 1740s, 1750s, 1760s, 1770s. And you you learn a little thing about like apothecary and how they used to make candles and how they used to make medicine. And I like it for that regard. And let's be fair. I I mean, I I do like it for the, the fighting to a certain extent, but the main reason I love this show is because of her. I think she is a statuesque beauty. She is quite tall. And Katrina, Katrina, Katriona, Katriona, we'll just call her Claire. How about that? Claire, not surprisingly, was a model. So she is Irish, as I mentioned, and she was discovered at a very young age at 18 and then by Ford Models. And then she was a model for about 10 years uh, before she, 
at least 10 years before she started getting some uh, glimpses of acting in Hollywood and so forth. But really, she was doing here and there nothing special until she was cast in Outlander. And she did appear in some small movies like Now You See Me. That is the, the movie Jesse Eisenberg. And, and it's kind of the Ella Fisher's in that. It's kind of like a Houdini kind of movie. She had a small role in Super 8, the old J.J. Uh, Abrams Al Fanning vehicle, but very small characters. And then she got Outlander, and Outlander, of course, made her life. And it's, I mean, she's always going to be known for this role. Post Outlander, she has done some movies. Most famously, she did Ford versus Ferrari, and that is the vehicle of May's favorite, Christian Bale and Matt Damon. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe she plays the wife of Bale. And then she was in Belfast, which is Kenneth Branagh's coming to age drama, where essentially it's the the boy in the movie is him growing up, kind of like with The Fablemans with Spielberg. And it takes place, I believe, in Belfast. And she plays the the mother. And the the father is played by Jamie Dornan. And it's kind of like what it was like growing up with the early stirrings of the IRA. And so she is, is very prominent in that movie. And there were some stirrings and talk that she might maybe get with some, some award nominations. But in terms of, of her beauty, why do I like her? Because she's just, just statuesque. She is just a very kind of pristine face. It's a regal face, but it's a very virtue signaling face. She, I would not perceive her to be sexy even when she dresses up. She just has a kind of a very aristocratic uh, look to her. It's hard to explain, but she has a very striking face and she's got the, the porcelain white skin that I like and she's tall and she's uh, slender, which I typically like in my Sexy Saturdays. And she just has a very unique beauty. And of course, that's what made it, makes her a model. Models are not typically women that have conventional beauty. Like you don't, for every Kate Upton, which is kind of the conventional beauty, if you look at most supermodels, they have very unique beauties that most people many times wouldn't even consider beautiful. If you think of like Kate Moss, for example, back in the 90s, she would not have been considered classically beautiful. Even someone like Christy Turlington or Naomi Campbell. Um, some of these women would not be con- considered traditionally beautiful. Bella Hadid, someone more contemporaneous. Let's take a break. I wanted to let you know about some of the other feeds here at the Eclectico Gregorio. The oldest one we have is The Awakened Man, which mostly deals with holistic health, medical cover-ups, ways to biohack your life, to ensure longer longevity, medical conspiracies, and naturopathic stuff. We also have, and that there's probably about 400, 500 episodes over there. We started that one back in 2017, 2016, I believe. We also have the Female Holistic Health Apothecary, which originally started as an essential oils feed. And there's about 100 episodes on essential oils, particular essential oils like rose and lavender and sandalwood and so forth. And then later I morphed it into more topics that are regarded for female health, female specific We've had that feed also since 2016. And then lastly, we have Confessions of an Obese Child, which deals with my childhood obesity and trauma that came from it. So it's a great feed for those who dealt with childhood trauma that led you to have addictions to alcohol or food. And I interview several people and what it was like to grow up overweight and all the difficulties of losing the weight and then keeping it off and trying to metamorphosize into a regular weighted person so check out those feeds at the eclectical gregory on apple or spotify bella hadid would not be considered traditionally beautiful but models have a very unique look and of course the funny thing about modeling is like nobody wears the clothes that these these women model but because they're tall and because they have a certain look then then model then then designers can use them kind of as avatars and rarely do you of course things are changing you see plus size models and shorter models but as a whole they were always going kind to of tall and nondescript cipher types and Katrina was just 
just cut from that cloth and it's it's understandable why she was discovered in terms of the show outlander uh there's also her the, the girl who plays her daughter i find to be also quite attractive i think her name is uh, sophie skelton if i'm not mistaken i find her to be quite attractive and she is a redhead and I think she's attracted to I've always had a propensity for redheads or fake redheads um, I, I do like Amy Adams especially at her peak we have an episode here on Hila Fisher and some other actresses as well for some of you who have not watched Outlander I think the early seasons if I'm not mistaken are on Netflix and I definitely recommend you watch the show because this show and of course read the books but <laughs> most people don't read books anymore the show has a little for everybody and especially if you like sweeping romances you'll like it in most most women like Sam Hewen, the guy who plays Jamie, because I think Jamie has a lot of qualities that women really want. He is a, a, a masculine man, but he's he's sensitive when he needs to be sensitive, but he's very skilled, but very honorable. And he, he just kind of has that Fabio romance novel tropes where he's a tender defender, but he's he's very strong and masculine, but... At the same time, he's he's sweet and charming, and of course, he's nice on the eyes. But definitely, Katrina Balfe, you are one of my sexy Saturdays, and I find you very attractive. She's currently 43 years old, and uh, in terms of her personal life, she married her longtime boyfriend about four or five years ago, and she did have a child. And we shall see what her career is going to be like post-Outlander, because I'm assuming Outlander can only go a couple more seasons, because it's based on the books, and if I'm not mistaken, I think there's very few books left for them to glean on right now they're going into the american revolution don't ask if you haven't watched this show they went from 1740s to to 1780s america that's why you got to watch the show but it'll be interesting to see what her career is afterwards uh, because i do think she does have some acting chops and she for being irish i think she has a pretty convincing british accent and i do think she's a decent actress i don't think she's got humongous range but It'll be interesting to see how she develops her career. And in terms of her beauty, she has one of those beauties that will age very well. So I could see her continuing to do, if not uh, television, maybe some film. Guys, I would appreciate you rate and review the Cinema Rag if you haven't done so already. It just helps with the algorithm. There's a link for PayPal to make a donation. There's a link to the website, which hosts all the Click of Gregorio feeds. But it's just best to listen to them on Apple and Spotify. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray. Thanks for listening to the Cinema Rag. Please post an honest review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Check out the episode notes to visit our website and to make a donation. Lastly, follow the rag today. Until next time.